Hey guys, in this video, I am going to discuss about UiPath public apps. How can you make an app go public? So what is the meaning of public in this particular sense? I am going to talk about it. So let's look at the agenda. We are going to have an understanding of public app preview, which is an experimental feature. We are going to understand that. And then the second uh, thing that we are going to learn, multiple ways to enable or disable public app okay what are the different options available we are going to look at that on the cloud and then we are also going to look at public uh, you know the public app benefits and couple of features associated with public app so let's get started and learn uipath public apps so let's get started the very first thing we will log into the automation cloud uipath which is cloud.uipath.com once you log into cloud.uipath.com on the automation cloud platform, this is the automation cloud platform. On the left hand side, you have something called apps. We will go inside apps. Okay. Give it few seconds. So this is the apps studio and here I have the option to build a new app. So there are multiple ways to enable a already created app or a new app go public so for example we will start with a new app i need to click on this and then this this is the option i need to enable public app okay for example i'm create, creating an app called my first app and i would like to go public then this is the option i need to click public app and click on create this is one way let's say you have already created app and you would like to go public now so still you have an option what you can do is you can click on this three dots click on share and here under the manage access right under the manage access here you have the option publica okay this is another option the another third option for example let's say you are opening an app in edit mode right from the edit mode also you have an option here if you click on the settings button right you again you can come back to the manage access and here also you can enable or disable public app. so you saw multiple different ways how you can enable or disable public app now there is a basic difference i'm going to show you at the moment if i go back to the home page let's go back to the home page okay so this is how it is i did not do any changes now if you see this this is the three dot and i'm going to hit on copy url let's paste this url here so if you see there is nothing mentioned if you closely look at the url you do not see something called public here right you, you do not see something public and if you hit on enter this is going to simply bring up the app which i had created so if you share this url now because we haven't made it public other people who is not part of this automation cloud as a user they are not part of it they won't be able to access this url Let's say I would like to give it to another friend who is working in a different department of the same company. This URL won't work for him because he is not part of the automation cloud organization. Okay, he's not added to this, so he can't access anything in this URL. Now, if I have to make it public, okay, all I have to do simply, you know, I showed you multiple options. Let me use this option: three dots share. And I'm going to hit on public app and I'm going to hit on publish, okay, by public app. And then you have to publish. The moment I hit on publish, what would happen? Uh, description, what changes you have made, nothing, just a test. So I'll say test, hit on publish. Okay, getting your app ready to publish. Your latest change, uh, changes are now available to app users. So what happened just now? If you go back to the studio, you would see a globe icon has come which is an indication that this app is available to users outside of your automation cloud or, or outside of your organization. That means the public with the URL will be able to access this app. So now let's see the URL, okay, how this URL appears. If I click on copy URL, earlier you see, right, how it was. Now if I'm, you know, if I paste this URL, I see a public added in the URL. If you hit on enter now this url given to anybody outside of your automation cloud will be able to access this the public will be able to access it 
Now, when things goes to public, you know, there are so many things one has to consider. The data security is the first thing that comes to our mind. Now, I'm going to talk about one of the important feature. For that, all you do, just simply type UiPath app, public app docs. You know, I want to really open a uh, document related to public apps. Okay. Let me open this UiPath public apps document. And here, I'm going to show you a few important things. Okay. Now, you saw when we were making a app public, right? When we were trying to enable this public app, it said it is in preview mode. So, what is this preview mode? Do you have an understanding? Preview mode means it is not recommended for it to be get on to production deployments. It should not go live. It's just an experiment feature. Try out new features before they become generally available. These features may make your app unstable and are subject to change. So, they are not recommended for production deployment. Remember, anywhere you find a preview option, they are not production ready. You should not move them to production for general usage okay so that is the first thing you should know and there is a in the document on the top itself there is a recommendation there is a warning given what is the warning in case of entities that means in case of big companies or in case of organizations right in case of entities it is recommended that you remove the everyone group to eliminate unintentional data access for public apps now you have created a public app uh, highly possible that somebody can you know uh, misuse the data right so it is highly recommend that one should remove the everyone group to eliminate unintentional un data access unintentional data access so what is this everyone group i'm going to show you where do you find this everyone group what is that document talking about let me show you for this you have to click on this three dots and go to data service so I'm going out of the app studio and going, getting into data service. Okay. So this is the data service. Let me refresh. Let me try again. So click on this three dots and hit on data service. Yeah. Now it is looking fine. Data service. Now here click on this three dots and click on manage access. Okay. And here you have the everyone group. What they are recommending is you need to remove this everyone group. This has got a data reader access. If you click on this three dots, you will see the group everyone. These are the default groups created by UiPath. Okay, default groups. This particular group has a data reader access. So either you remove this or but I, this is also one of the way. Let me remove. So no, I am not getting a save option. Do you see? It's by default enabled. I don't have a... I mean, if I uncheck this, so data reader, probably I can, I'll be able to add more and save it, but I'm not able to remove this data reader and save it. Okay. So they are recommending you to remove this group completely like this. Okay. And remove, I'm not going to do it, but anyone who is going for this, this document is very, very important. Now, the other thing is what are the benefits of, um, you know, you can use UiPath apps to create apps that are available to users outside of your automation cloud. So this is your automation cloud. Outside of your automation cloud, if anybody would like to access uh, the app, uh, you know, this is helpful. This is helpful if you make it to public. If you enable that public option, this will become available. Anybody who is not be able to access automation cloud, other users, I mean, in your company, other people will be able to access it, right? Okay. Uh, so, what are the uh, practical use cases, uh, some of the use cases what UiPath has documented here, creating a timesheet for your employees, right? Creating a form to reset a password, you are creating an app to reset password or change the address. Okay, there are a couple of examples uh, that will be beneficial when you create an app and make it public. So, the entire public can use it and you can utilize those data, collected data in some other way. Okay, so these are some practical use cases. Uh, now, uh, what I'm interested is you saw how to enable public app both the ways you have saw. You saw how the URL is changing. There is another thing that I'm also going to talk about is OAuth. Okay, there is something called OAuth apps where you see these public apps are created using UiPath app start. Okay, what is this in the documentation? Many people will have a bit of uh, confusion uh, where what is the meaning of this documentation. Let me show you that. Now for this, uh, you have to go to home. 
click on this three dots and go to the admin uh, the admin yeah this is the admin so click on the admin now here in the admin right the under the automate with rakesh is the organization this is the organization this is the tenant okay uh, you have the symbol so under this there is something called external application click on this okay so here i have made a app customer detail app go public okay if you click on this three dots you can see it has started with uipath app application name started with uipath app and then you have the name okay customer detail app the name you have given to the app and then there is an application id and so and so things so this document is saying you can find your app in the oauth app tab in external application from admin panel okay now what is the use of this what is the use of this name or uh, uipath apps customer apps detail i'm going to show you so they are saying setting up external app use the following steps in orchestrator to set up your external app what they are saying define the appropriate roles for your external application for processes tenant role webhook view and create folder role jobs and create okay what is i'm going to show you one of the example how to how to enable this okay so i'll go to tenant okay first of all click on this three dots click on orchestrator so this this documents might be slightly confusing for people what does this mean right so let me show you okay so here define the appropriate role for your external app for processes tenant role webhook view and create access should be given or you can change it okay based on the requirement so first of all i'll go to tenant i'll click on manage access okay uh, then i'll go to roles first i will create few roles okay so let me delete one role which I had created remove delete i'm going to create a role add a tenant role add a folder role there are two things okay if you see in the document tenant role folder role it is specifying tenant role and folder role so i will say tenant role first i will create a tenant role and i'll give it a name okay so i'll say external external app webhooks i will say external app webhooks okay so here i will select webhooks and i will only provide create and view and create okay so i'll select view for webhooks and i will provide create so i'm removing delete and edit delete and edit i'm removing only keeping as per the documentation i'm doing but it is your choice you know what kind of things you would like to give view and create view and create and i'm going to hit on create so what happened i just now created a tenant role if you see external app webhooks tenant role i have created now let me also create a folder role folder role and here it is saying um jobs should be given create access okay jobs create so here i will select jobs and i'll only give create access create access and here i'll say external app jobs folder rule and hit on create okay jobs create so now if i look at external app jobs this is the folder rule which i have created later on we can come here and we can make edit okay as per the requirement we can do changes but this is where you come uh, and create the rules I'm, I'm trying to mention okay now for storage buckets uh, this is how you will be creating storage buckets view folder rule folder queue okay uh, so this is how you will be providing you will be creating different rules so once the rules are created for example the rules have been created now i'll be assigning roles okay now for assigning roles uh, so they have not written in the documentation but how do you assign roles i am going to show you maybe there's a different document for this but again you have to click on this assign role and here you find something called external app so i'll click on external app and search for an external app so here you remember we went to oauth if you type uipath it gives you the name of that particular app okay with the id application id so i'm going to select this app and then i'm going to select the roles just now i have created so i have created some roles with external app right 
external app webhook okay and then external new rule okay these are all tenant rules not the folder rules are not available these are the tenant rules so i'm going to hit on assign adding the external app to a folder it requires a different option so previous one we have seen doing inside the uh, tenant and then we went to manage access okay now the folder rules that i have created for that you have to click on tenant and click on folders okay this is a slightly different way and let's say this is the folder uh, which the external app will be accessing so here i will click on the folder and then click on assign account group okay and in the filter bar you can select external app and type the name it will start from uipath apps okay so i'm selecting customer details app and then you remember i have created this external app job folder role so i'm going to add this rule and hit on assign so multiple rules that you might have created you can select them and hit on assign okay so that way what actually happened is the application uh, the external app has got few roles okay uh, based on the roles we have created for the external app so these are the couple of documentation you know one has to go through this documentation before making the app application go public there are so many other things that one has to consider for example here when using entities with the public app make sure to provide only the relevant permission in data service a good way to do that is to create a specific role and provide specific permission that are needed avoid using read permission for entities that have information you don't want to be exposed externally okay only grant view and edit permission on an entity if you are comfortable with all uses of that app having access to all the data in that entity it is recommended that you remove the everyone group to eliminate this i have shown you how to do it add your external app to both tenant and a folder for more information checking the configuring fine grinded access or external app this here is the link okay this link will uh, guide you how do you fine grain and provide uh, fine grain access to uh, this one uh, to the app so here this is the document which i am showing uh, right so this is the document once you go through this entire document you will be able to understand how this will be set if required i can create another uh, video around this but again this document will be good enough for you to uh, go through and enable how it is guiding you because you saw where they are and how they are you got a bit of example so this document should be able to help you to set up uh the fine grain access for the external lab okay so thank you guys for watching we are going to uh, meet once again in our next content till then take care bye bye